All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra, and today we're doing a Photoshop tutorial. We're going to talk about this picture of a kitty cat, and uh, you might notice something interesting about this picture of a kitty cat, and that is that um, this whole picture of the kitty cat looks like someone took a picture of it through, like, a yellow filter, and it looks like someone, like, it's covered in, like, wee or something. I don't know. But this cat is probably not yellow. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of cats out there with this particular shade of yellow, but I sort of doubt it. But we're gonna fix that today, so I'm actually gonna just unlock this layer. And just for the hell of it, let's, um, duplicate that layer so that we can move on without messing with anything. So there's a couple different ways that we can really start to fix this cat. And you're, you'll kind of get an eye for this, but this is sort of a very light tone of kind of icky yellow. So one of the ways that we have, thanks to Photoshop originally being very um, dabbled in, well, photography, is there's a bunch of different photo filters that you could use in a photography lab to adjust colors that's just like a disk of color you put it over the lens of the photo enlarger that you use to print it onto photo paper. And in Photoshop, it's this little image of a camera with a little circle on the lower right. And that's a little photo filter adjustment layer. And this we can use a cooling filter to counteract the warmer yellow tones. And already this cat is looking a lot less like urine. Isn't that the best? Um, the trouble with these photo filters is that while they do a decent job of counteracting the color imbalances, if you're not careful, you can end up with a blue cat or like a cyan cat or a yellower cat or a red cat. So use these sparingly. These can be massive overkill. And there's a couple different types of cooling filters in here that are basically just different hues of blue. That's all you're really doing is you're putting a transparent layer of blue for a cooling filter or like orange for a warming filter over top of the photo and it just naturally kind of counteracts some of the color imbalance. So that's one way that you can quickly just kind of cheaply take out some of that color. The other way, if we delete that photo filter, is we can use this other thing that looks like a pair of scales. That's a color balance tool. And here we can go through each of the different subsets of color in the photo. We can jump through highlights. We can jump through the midtones, the, the shadowy tones of the darker parts of the cat's fur. And we can slowly fix the different color issues that arise in this picture. And it usually helps to understand exactly what color everything in here is supposed to be. Typically because you only have like one photo in like a batch of photos you took in like your bedroom or your house or your backyard. There's only one of them that's all funky and weird. So you can actually kind of tell what everything's supposed to be. I'm guessing that this cat has kind of got like a grayish brown tail and face and ears and like a grayish white coat. And that, you know, the bedspread that it's on, this is white and then that's orange there. So we'll figure it out from there. So I've got this color balance tool, this adjustment layer here sitting on top of everything. And I'm going to start with the highlights because this looks like a kind of brightish photo. And I'm just going to look for any of these sliders that looks like I want the opposite. So like, you know, yellow is very close to green and it's kind of ish towards red. So I'm going to want to pull it towards like magenta, blue and cyan if I want to counteract some of this yellowy things going on here. So let's just grab this one right here and we'll just kind of start dragging it around. So the highlights are pulling out the yellow from the bedspread. So that's a good start. And we're only going to do a little bit with each one of these filters that we use. We're going to layer them because we can slowly build them up without blowing out one filter so we don't have to constantly fiddle with each of them for half an hour. We can just tweak a little bit here. We can tweak a little bit there and everyone will go home happy and not going crazy from looking at little numbers and drag sliders all day. So green is kind of making it more yellow. So we're just going to kind of 
see what it does with magenta, but that magenta is not really helping us. So we'll leave that at zero. And what is this blue doing? It's kind of just kind of sitting in the middle. So it looks like we really just want the bottom slider here. So let's go to the midtones and drag this over a little bit. Yep, that looks more like a cat. Yep, that's looking exactly like a cat should look. And then we'll go to the shadows. Uh, we don't uh, see the problem with the shadows is darker shadow colors are naturally kind of black, kind of black and blue, especially in cameras that work in RGB or CMYK. I'm currently just using an image I found off of uh, Imgur that I just pulled off the web. So it's going to be in RGB, which stands for red, green or red, green and blue. And pulling it towards the blue here is actually just kind of making the whole thing go purpley. So we're only going to pull that down just a smidge and we're actually going to go back to the midtones and see if these other sliders help us out at all. And it doesn't look like they're gonna, so we're just gonna kind of fiddle with these a little bit. Yeah, I think a little cyan here in the midtones is gonna be necessary. And really, all you, it's just trial and error with a lot of these photos. Like, you can kind of know which ones you want to focus on for the sliders with practice, but you just kind of fiddle with it and you fix it little by little. So, I think that's about all we're gonna get out of this particular one. Otherwise, we're going to get like a weird green goblin cat. So I'm going to add another layer of color balance here. And I'm going to start at the highlights again, just to be sure we got what we want. And that we don't get like a, a frigid blue cat, because we don't want a blue cat. Blue cats are weird. Blue cats are from the Teletubby dimension, and we don't talk about the Teletubby dimension. It's full of horror, and I think that's where we sent Gargamel for 10,000 years of torment and uh, punishment for what he did to the Smurfs. So I think the highlights are pretty good there. We kind of play with the cyan and the magenta a little bit. Let's see what the midtones look like. So pulling it around, looks like we could do with a smidge more of blue. Just a smidge. We don't need a lot. Just play with it little by little. It's not, this isn't like a wrecking ball. Don't go at it with a sledgehammer. And then we'll kind of hit it with some... I'm feeling a little magenta, not a lot, just a smidge. And then cyan, again, it's it's starting to give us a blue cat. So we're going to move to the shadows. Start at the bottom. So blue is giving us kind of like a darker blue haze to this. I don't know if you can see that in the highlights of the cat's tail, but we're starting to get a blue cat. So you got to be careful. Watch out for blue kitties. Look out for the shadowy areas, the darker bits, so that they don't get too blue. Uh, yeah, that's a little, just a smidge more, like four, and then, this isn't actually looking bad. So typically the reason why you get a yellow or a blue photo is because the flash or the color balance for your cheap camera, like in your, your smartphone is probably what this was taken with, it got over kind of blown by the fact that this wallpaper in the background is a little bit yellow, or maybe you have like a solid oak door and you take a picture directly at it and the camera light just kind of bounces around and the camera says, oh yeah, this needs to be all yellow or kind of gold colored. And that's when you run into problems. So now that we've kind of gone through here and kind of fidgeted with it a little bit more and seen that everything is kind of about as much as we're going to tweak it, I'm going to go to curves. Now, you might not be familiar with curves. I don't know how familiar you folks are at home with Photoshop, but curves is how we adjust the lighting in the scene. It's how we make this kitty cat pop out more without making the bedspread that the cat is sitting on um, stab our eyeballs with how bright it is. So just remember, middle is the midtones, high is the brights, and the bottom is shadows. That's really all you need to know. Um, I'm actually going to reset this because I just added a bunch of points on my curves. So let's see, we need the midtones to kind of perk up a little bit. And then we need to make sure that we don't have too much contrast, but I still want to tell that the cat has got some kind of darker splotches in its fur. So we'll just fiddle around with that until we kind of see a nice contrast. And then what are we looking at here for the brights? 
The brights aren't looking too bad. And one thing you can do, let's turn this layer off and add a new one. Sometimes, don't, don't use this every time, but sometimes Photoshop's automated brain parts can do a pretty good job of cleaning up your photo. So if you're not quite sure what changes to make to a photo when you're first learning this stuff, go ahead and hit the auto button and you can kind of get an idea of what Photoshop thinks you ought to do. So right now, Photoshop, it, it has told me two things. It has agreed with me that the midtones, the cat, needs to be tuned, turned up and that the brights, there isn't like a full white point in the picture. Something to note for photography is it's a good idea always to have a white white section in your photo and a black black section. So in this case, it's the cat. Parts of the cat's tail and its feet are black. And then parts of the bedspread are white. So we're kind of good there. But the contrast is not really doing it for us. So we're just going to, again, we're going to just kind of fiddle around and feel out what parts of the picture we want to improve here. And just note that not every picture that you find off the internet or that you get from your grandma or from your uncle is going to be salvageable. They're not. Like, ideally, if you really wanted a good picture of this cat, you take a picture of it with a DSLR, with a raw photo, and then you could manipulate everything if something was weird. Ah, I think this cat actually has kind of bluish eyes naturally. And that's not unusual for kittens either, which is another good tidbit of information to have. So, I mean, this, this isn't bad. I kind of want to throw this brightness and contrast, the little sun icon. And let's see if we bump the contrast, turn down the brightness here. Again, this is all about layering effects to get the, it, the result that you want. So then we can turn right back around and add more curves. And we're starting to get a kitty cat. Now, this isn't going to be a lesson exactly how to do curves 100%, but this, this is kind of a dark picture. It really is. So look at that. We got the cat. We got cat eyeballs. We got cat hair. Unfortunately, we've kind of lost some detail here on the cat's chest, and it's a little hard to tell where cat ends and wall begins. That is just a, f a matter of the fact that this was a really poor quality photo in the first place, so there's really nothing you're going to do about it. Some notes about what I've done, because I'm not going to really refine this, because again, it's a low quality photo. If you look down here, we've got some blue artifacting going on here in its tail. Now, you can usually just remove that by adding a couple more color balance filters or going, you know, and manipulating the channels one by one. Which one was the color channels thing? They changed all the icons on me with the latest update and it messes with my brain. So here we can go into the color channels, we can go to blue, and I wanna say I want less of, or more of the blue. Pull the blue to black. And you can slowly take this and you can start pulling out the colors that you don't want. I can just pull this all the way out and make it pea colored if I wanted to. Eh, it's not, I mean, I'm just gonna leave that as it was, but I mean, you can also just select these areas and then you can just pull them out individually, the blue artifacts by, using the lasso tool and just selecting this part of the cat and being like, yeah, I'd really like to fix that. So I'm going to merge these layers real quick. Just so I can give you guys an example of what happened. So this is finished cat or somewhat finished cat that has been photo kind of manipulated to kind of fix some of the color. And this is what we started with. So it's not grade A, but if you're fixing some some of your like phone pictures because you want to share them online and you want to kind of gussy them up to make yourself look like a, a big fancy person. This is how you do it for the color anyway. Um, next time we're going to go over how to use things like the clone stamp and fixing old timey photos. So hope you're looking forward to that because that's what we're doing. So yeah, I hope this helps you guys and gals out at home. I've been your, uh, your teacher guy, Larry the Chupacabra. This has been the Chupacabra Tutorials. And yeah, more on the way. And let me know if there's any other software or sort of features that you're looking at that you're kind of confused on how to use. Because I've spent a lot of time in this software and it has brought on the digital design madness. And I'd like to share that madness with everyone. So yeah, I've been Larry. 
Um, maybe check out my gaming channel because I do a lot of cool stuff over there, like review games and do first looks and series and all sorts of stuff. And I'll catch you guys and gals next time. Toodles.